Hey guys, I am the math professor Kyle Martin, and this is the channel where we do your math homework fast and accurately. All right, today we're talking all about definition of congruence in our geometry proof reasons playlist. Okay, in this video, we're going to give you a quick definition, a brief example, two real proofs, all right, all in less than two minutes. There are timestamps in the video player down below. Let's get into it. Okay, starting off with a quick definition of the definition of congruence. Um, it says that AB. It can be congruent to BC, and then that implies that AB equals BC. So the difference is our sign here in the middle. All right, practically what this is saying is that if AB is five, and we know that AB is congruent to BC, BC is also five, all right? So you have to spell it out in a couple different lines. You could also do the same thing with their angles. If you know that their measures are the same, you can go backwards and say that both of those now are congruent. All right, guys, our first proof says that B is the midpoint of AC, C is the midpoint of BD, and we need to prove that AB is equal to CD. So I have my first couple statements here. Of course, that's my given. It was given to me. All right, then it says that AB is congruent to BC, BC is congruent to CD. Well, I use the definition of a midpoint, all right? So I can actually mark up my picture now and say those are really all congruent to each other. Because they're all congruent to each other, I can say AB is congruent to CD, right? Based off the picture, but more importantly, because of the transitive property, right? We cut out our middleman, AB is congruent to CD. Then the one we're interested in is the difference between three and four is actually the sign. When your sign one is congruent and one is equal, that is automatically definition of congruence. All right, proof two. Okay guys, our next proof says that we're given angle two is congruent to angle three. We're trying to prove that angle one is congruent to angle four. All right, I actually got my first given from my diagram. And then um, because these are linear pairs, I was able to set them equal to 180. Since they're both set equal to 180, I can set them equal to each other, right? If they're both equal to 180, they're both equal to each other. And so that's where line three came, came in by substitution. And then here's where my actually given comes in, angle two is congruent to angle three. But then I noticed that my next line, instead of congruence, now I'm equals. Again, that's gonna be our definition of congruence. All right, I was able to substitute these in to my last equation and do some subtraction to get finally that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle four. But now I need to go backwards. Remember, I'm trying to prove congruence, not equals. So if I go forwards or backwards from equals to congruence or congruence to equals, either way, definition of congruence. Hey guys, I hope this video on the definition of congruence helped you out. If it did, I'd love to hear about it. Leave me a comment down in the comment section down below. Um, also, please subscribe to this channel. That way it's easier to find in the future when you need more proof help. Also, when you subscribe, send me a little message saying, hey, I subscribed, I'll be sure to respond to you.